Now let's talk about planning a server installation. On the exam, you're going to see questions that will touch on the topic of what you do to prepare to install a server. And planning is very important in the real world and on the exam. One of the things you want to watch on the exam is that you give Microsoft the answers they're looking for because they may prioritize things a little bit differently than you do in the real world, but make sure you stay on track with Microsoft here. One of the first questions you need to ask in relation to the exam when you're installing a server is, is this going to be a full graphical user interface installation, what we would know as a standard installation, or is it going to be server core? Now, if you don't know what server core is, we'll talk about it later, but that's going to be your first question to answer. Next, you need to already select a computer name for this new server before you install it. That name can be up to 63 characters. Make sure you remember that. And if you have any pre-Windows 2000 computers, that means Windows NT or NT Workstation or any of that stuff, Windows 95, 98, those will only see the first 15 characters. So keep that in mind. And then when you name the computer, you can use Internet Standard Characters. Letters of the alphabet, A through Z, upper and lower case, the numbers 0 through 9, and you can use a hyphen. Don't let them trip you up or confuse you, but hyphens are absolutely fine in the names on the computers. Now, when you start the installation process, at some point it's going to ask you, do you want to join a work group or a domain, or do you want to create a work group or a domain? You need to know this. If you're going to join a work group or a domain, and if you're installing a server, you're probably going to be joining a domain and you won't mess with a work group. So you want to know the name of the domain you're joining or the name of the domain that you intend to create. Next up, network protocol. You'll have to choose that. Usually nowadays it's TCP IP. That shouldn't be a big deal. IP address. There's a gotcha here I want you to watch for on the exam, okay? First of all, we all know static is the most common type of address that we use for our servers, right? We give them a static IP address because we don't want it changing. Watch this one on the exam. Automatic private IP addressing, APIPA, can technically be used for servers. Now, if you're on a real small network without DHCP, I'm not sure why you're using a server, but watch for this little trick question on the exam. You can use this and you'll see that address at 169.254 that can be used on a server. It's rare. It usually indicates a network problem, but just know that it can happen and don't let them trip you up. Now, a dynamic IP address is one that's assigned by a DHCP server, and you can watch for that. Then you'll want to answer questions about backup and watch for this when you prepare for the exam and when you're taking it. You should always perform a full backup of the operating system and the data before beginning any kind of install, whatever machine you're working on. If you're going to do a clean install, that's going to wipe all the data out on it. So back up whatever's there. If you're going to do an upgrade, it's not supposed to wipe out the data, but how many times have you been there till 2 a.m. because an upgrade hung, it messed up the machine, it wouldn't start, you had to do a clean install. So always get a good backup before beginning a server installation. So that's really the steps. Watch for these, especially those 169.254 addresses and some of the other technicals like 63 characters. But those are the questions that you need to answer according to Microsoft. And you'll be questioned about this on the exam about planning a server installation.